Hello. In the, uh, the last video of this uh, series on infinity and infinitesimal, I gave the, uh, the famous example of Hilbert's Hotel, an illustration of different aspects of infinity. And um, part of that uh, illustration uh, required you to take on faith that there are infinitely many prime numbers. Now, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. How, how do we know this? Well, it was proven over 2,000 years ago by Euclid. Euclid was the, the famous uh, Greek, ancient Greek geometer. He's the fellow who assembled uh, all this vast knowledge of geometry and probably created a bit of it himself into a set of volumes called The Elements. And, uh, and his books are still in print after over 2,000 years. How about that? So uh, Euclid came up with this uh, very ingenious argument uh, about infinity, uh, the infinity of primes. He realized that um, if we're going to go about this, uh, there are only two ways to show it directly. That you would either have to list all of them, and that would be impossible to write them all down, or you would have to find some way to, to generate them, some kind of process or formula that would uh, create or, or, or calculate infinitely many prime numbers. And to this day, uh, I don't think there is still a formula for that. I think uh, we have an idea what it would look like, but, but no one has quite pinned it down yet. In, in any event, um, Euclid uh, may, maybe, not, maybe was not quite sure there are infinitely many primes when he said about this, uh, because if you start calculating prime numbers, you'll find that they get sparser and sparser. There are fewer and fewer of them as you get up in the high numbers. So conceivably, they could run out. All right, well, um, just to remind you what a prime number is, a prime number is a number that can be divided only by itself in one. So here are the first um, six prime numbers. There's only one even prime number. All the rest are odd. And Euclid's approach was indirect, and this is the genius of it. Uh, this is one of the first uh, great examples of, of human thought in terms of mathematics and, and logic. Um, an indirect proof uh, assumes the opposite and then comes up with a contradiction. It's, uh, I think in logic it's called uh, reductio ad absurdum, to reduce to an absurdity. I believe that's what the technique is called. Okay, well, here's how, how Euclid approached it. He says, well, let's suppose that, um, that there are only finitely a limited number of prime numbers. Then there has to be a largest one. Now, I'm going to take a, a more relaxed approach on this proof, and, uh, and let me just assume that 13 is the largest prime number. I, I, I know, you know, there are larger prime numbers than 13, like 17 or 19. But just for sake of argument, let's suppose that, that 13 is the largest prime number. So Euclid says, all right, suppose there's the largest prime number. Here's what I propose to do. I'm going to take this number and multiply it by all the previous numbers, down to 1. So if we're using 13, 13 times 12 times 11 times 10, times 9 times 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. All right, uh, fortunately, math, mathematicians have come up with an a, a easier way of writing that. When you, when you multiply a consecutive string of integers from 1 up to a number, we would call that a factorial. So this would be called 13 factorial. A factorial has an exclamation mark after it. Uh, you can find this uh, an exclamation mark or factorial key on any scientific calculator. As a matter of fact, I, I went ahead and calculated this on my calculator, and it was uh, 6,227,020,800. All right. Well, when they get that big, they, they sort of cease to be very interesting, I don't think. Okay, so Euclid says, all right, 13 is, is largest, is largest, is his assumption. And he constructs a new number. He says, well, I, I, I'm going to add 1 to this number. So let's take our largest prime number, calculate the factorial, and we'll add 1 to it. And so if I add 1, it'll end in 801 instead of 800. All right, so there's our, our number. It says, okay, now here's, here's the problem. We can 
divide this number right here, the one ending in 800, we can divide this number by any number up to 13. However, this new number I created, by adding 1 to it, if I divide it by a number between 2 and 13, I'll get a remainder of 1. For example, it's, you can't divide this number by 2 because it's an odd number. What if you divided it by 3? Well, if I divided this whole number by 3, this part divides out because the 3 cancels, but it leaves a 1 third, so you get a 1 third remainder. If you divided it by 11, you would get, 11 would cancel here, and you would get a 1 11th remainder. So, all numbers up to 13 will not divide into this number. They said, well, that, that presents a problem. That means that, that either this number is a prime number, it has, has no divisors at all, or if you can factor it, write it as a product of, of smaller numbers, um, these smaller numbers must contain larger prime numbers than our largest. <laughs> In other words, there has to be a prime number that divides into this larger than our 13. Or it's a prime number itself. So what, what did that show that says, well, you know, if I assume 13 is the largest prime number, here's a number that I can guarantee contains a larger prime number if it's not prime itself. And so we've just created or found the existence of a larger prime number than the one we assumed was the largest. Well, what happens now? Well, okay, you found a, there must be a larger prime number. Well, suppose that's the largest and you could go through this similar process and then determine that there's yet a larger prime number and you keep doing this and um, you never can get a largest prime number because you can always find a larger one. That's sort of a, a working definition of infinity, a, a sort of process that's unbounded that continues uh, without, without cease. So, um, <laughs> anyway, that's how Euclid was able to demonstrate infinitely many prime numbers. Now, a, a mathematician and, and Euclid uh, would, would be more general about this. We would say, well, suppose that, that the number p, for example, p for prime, suppose p is the largest prime number, then if you look at p factorial plus 1, we can make this similar argument that there must be a larger, larger prime number than this so-called largest one. All right, so that arrives at a contradiction. In other words, no matter how you turn, you always contradict this assumption that there's a largest prime number. Since you contradict that assumption, there must be an unlimited supply of prime numbers. There are infinitely many prime numbers. So there you have it. Uh, rather, rather ingenious way of, of tackling this, this problem.